we do know you fight. Holy Spirit, more than a chief guest. We want to hear you. We want to hear you more than We want to hear your truth. We want us to be renewed by your word. Speak to our hearts this morning and transform our lives so that we may look more and more like you, Lord Jesus. Father, we glorify you. Thank you. All that we pray is in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Today, we are sharing about priorities. And there it out up here. We like it. We like it. I don't get that often. <laughs> um, priorities. And I forgive me if I'm preaching to the choir. Um, you might all have your priorities in order, and it might not be for you. But, you know, God's word is always current and always accurate, so I pray that you receive. Um, you know, one year has gone by, and we've just stepped into a brand new year, and it feels like... It's not very different from what we were doing the last year, right? And it's a good time before we proceed any further to actually take count, take stock, and start moving forward. Um, when the Lord God gave the commandments to Moses, he said that the first commandment was, honor your Lord with all of your heart. You know, thou shalt honor your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And when Jesus summed it up in the New Testament, and he said, you can bring it all down to two. He said, worship your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind. And I know that we have gone through the minor prophets and we have looked at Malachi and Haggai and all of this, but nobody really sums it up as Haggai does. So I want to take you back to Haggai and I want to take you to chapter one. Do we have mood lighting up here or can we just have more lights? Yeah, more lights. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Let that be light. Can I'm really sorry. Can we put the cooler on too, please? It's really hot up here. Thank you. Yeah. It really is. I think you know it, when when you guys worship, you usher in the heat of the spirit, and it just whew, it's like fire in here. And so Haggai chapter one. Um, God says this through Haggai. He says, you have sown much, but harvest little. You eat, but there is not enough for you to be satisfied. You drink, but there is not enough for you to become drunk. You put on clothing, but no one is warm enough. And he who earns, he earns wages, but puts it into a purse with holes. You know, we are so busy. We are so busy. We have so much to do. We don't have time to get our priorities in order. We don't have time to put first things first. You know, when you first come to church and when you get taught about prayer, people ask you, how do you pray? And, and you know, you get taught, you say, you put your hands and you know, you, 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 the thumb is the closest to you, so you pray first to God, right? God is first. And then it is your spouse, your family, your children, your job, your friends, right? But you know, somewhere along the way, we kind of get that turned that way. And then we have friends and happy hour, and we have gaming time and, and all of these things, and then maybe spouse and maybe children, and then God last, right? What we need to understand is we will prioritize according to what's important to us, isn't it? You meet people where they have no time for anything. They are so busy, 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 so active but not productive, but so much to do until your, your, your boss calls and says, I'm sorry, your position is no longer needed, right? Or your doctor calls you and says, I need to talk to you. Your last test results are not looking good, right? Until something happens, until you go into your kid's bedroom and you find something that you never hoped you would find, until something really dramatic happens, time and priorities just flow. We go with the flow. We are organic people. We don't like organized religion. We want everything to just be natural and flow. God was a God of order. 
Everything he spoke, there was order. Everything, everything he created, there is order. From macroorganisms to microorganisms to the planet to every system that is inside of us and everything there is, God is a God of order. And there is no way we can escape that. And we think it's, you know, the only reason that we don't have order and that we don't prioritize God, even though he says seek him first, is because he isn't a priority. He isn't a priority. I read this really interesting story, and I, I hope I tell you the story right. Um, in our 20th March 2013, um, a little bull, who likes garage sales? Nobody got Love it. One man's trash, another man's trash, whatever it is. Okay, so this guy goes to this garage sale and he buys a little bull. He pays $3 for this little bull and he keeps it in his house and he keeps it for a long time and then one time he's just, you know, curious how much it might actually be of value when he takes it to this place and this, they say, oh, I actually think this is, you know, this is going to be worth something. It might be about 200000 I don't know how to pronounce this. Sotheby's? Sotheby's, is it? Yeah, the auction. Guess how much the bowl sold for? 2.2 million. It was a part of a, a piece of the Song Dynasty, right? So why do you think the guy who sold it to him sold it for three dollars? He didn't know its value, right? The person who knew the value paid 2.2 million for it. If we value, if we honor, if we regard, if we reverence, we will make time, won't we? If your children matter to you, you will spend time on your children, you will cook for them, you will care for them, you will read for them, you will listen to them. If you don't, you will drive them through my cousin every day. <laughs> if you love your spouse and you honor your spouse, you will lay your life down for your spouse, right? Priorities. You know when I first met Keith, and no, Keith is not here so I can talk about him. <laughs> yeah, he hates me sharing stories about him. Um, and I can take the liberty. He is always, because you know, he has to tell me, uh, if, if it's something important, quickly, he'll tell me, sweetheart, I need to tell you something. It's not urgent, but it's important. And sometimes he'll tell me, it's urgent and it's important. And then he says, no, it's not important, but it's urgent. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Do you know what? He was referring to an Eisenhower chart. Maybe he's always known about it. I didn't. Can I? Can I? This is what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find that out when I'm preparing for priorities. So we all have this. This is an Eisenhower matrix, okay? We all have this. We have everything that's really urgent. We have things that are really important. We have things that are not urgent, but that are still very important. We have things that are not important and urgent, and then we have things that are not urgent. Now, I'll start with what's urgent. Those are your top priorities. Those are things that are really important. Crises, things that have schedules, deadlines, you really, crazy consequences if you don't do it. That, that's that. And that's really important. And then there is this. There is Instagram in here, and Facebook, and TikTok. And you know, when you go into your phone and you look at screen time, that's all of that screen time here. Look, it's really good to look, go in there and learn and, and, and receive and all of that. But if, don't delete your screen time away. Some people even delete that because they don't want to know how long they spend on their screens. <laughs> but it's really good to know how long we spend on these things because you know that it's just that little high we want from scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and checking everybody else's business. Right? Seek ye first, God. Right? We are forever busy. We are forever busy, but we are not being productive. And God wants to tell us today. You know, we have gone through years and years and years of doing things the same way. And seasons have changed, times have changed, and God wants us to realize that we are living in critical and crucial times. And we can't just go with the flow anymore. We need to prioritize. And we need to put our priorities right. We really need to put our priorities right. You tell me you're not a morning person and you don't like doing things in the morning. Jesus sought his father out first thing in the morning. I, you know, you know how people tell you to pray. Sometimes people tell you, "Can you please pray that I will, I will get up and read my Bible?" No, you put your alarm and you get up and read your Bible. <laughs> please pray that I might be able to pray. You get up and pray. 
We're not praying about spiritual laziness here. We're not talking about spiritual laziness. We're talking about priorities. If it matters to you, you will make time for it. Oh, but my kids need me. Put God first. He will give you wisdom on how to raise your children. There are things that only you can do. Only you can be a mother, only you can be a wife, only you can be a father, only you can be those things. You don't need to be everything for everyone. You don't. You can't, you won't, and you don't need to. We are limited people with limited lives, limited time, limited resources, limited energy. And it's really good for God to let us know that we have limitations. It's a place to come in humility. We are not super women and men. We like to think we are. We like to think we are. And you know, we go through life thinking we can do this, but it's not. You see, when Pani and Debbie got married, they did, they did this amazing thing where they got two jars of sand, and I think Hani's was colored a different color and Debbie's was colored a different color. And they brought it into a, a, a one big empty jar and the two of them put the sand into it and they said, all of me, all of you, all of one now and cannot be separated, right? And I was thinking of bringing a jar and showing you something today, but I thought I'd make a mess on the pulpit and I didn't. But I'd like to take your imagination and go there. Think about the sand, right? It's the little, little grains of sand. You can't really separate it once it's in the jar. Is, is that right? Think about the things that are really important. Think about prayer and fasting and time with God and all of those things as big rocks, okay? And then the smaller rocks is your family, your, your job and all of those things, right? And think about all these other little pebbles you find, are like, you know, the, the teas you have, the coffees you have, the walks you go for, all, all the formal kind of events that you, you don't like being left out of, or oh, they're all going, I expect to go. Oh, oh really? I, oh yeah, so I should. There. You know, those kind of things. If you fill your jar with sand, right, if you fill your entire jar with sand, you don't have space for the big rocks that really matter. Is that right? You don't have room for the smaller rocks, which is your family. You fill it up with the sand, which is all of the other things that you do every time. Okay? You need to get the big rocks first so that every all the other things, when they get filled up, will take the spaces of what you have, but the rocks will take priority, right? We need to sort out our priorities. We need to sort out our priorities. You know, when in, in Matthew, when God, when Jesus says to his, uh, it's, it's his time for, um, his crucifixion is coming near, and he says to his disciples, his closest ones, he says, come watch with me, come pray with me. For one hour, come and pray with me. And he, he leaves them, and he goes and prays, and he comes back, and he finds them sleeping. Do you remember this? He finds them sleeping. He says, could you not wait up with me for one hour? He says, and then he says, though you're, Spirit is willing, your flesh is weak. Though your spirit is willing, your flesh is weak. And yes, the flesh is weak. And sometimes we give the devil far too much credit and say, oh, the devil did this and the devil did that and Satan is like this and Satan is like that. No. See, you have willpower. God gives you. The Holy Spirit puts in us desires. Desires that are, you know, to read his word, to be re renewed by his word, to want to spend time with him, to spend time in worship. He gives us these desires. But desires are only desires if you don't action them and they don't become actions. Right? If we don't set our alarms, yes, the first few weeks it's going to be really hard. Wake up and read the word. And you may not understand everything you read at first, but as you persevere, in Galatians it says, do not tire from doing right. Persevere to do good. In due time, you will reap. Is that right? Is that what the Word of God says? So we keep doing the mundane, the boring things, the, you know, reading through the Chronicles and Judges and things that don't sound so exciting. You keep reading and reading and reading till he starts speaking and speaking and speaking. You know? If we will draw close to him, he will draw close to us. He will draw close to us. But we need to set the time aside. So I think the first thing when you prioritize is discipline. Discipline is very important in a Christian's life. It is very important. We need discipline. And spiritual discipline is so important. It's like anything else. It's like a weight loss journey. It's like a... It's like a, uh, a, a uh, resistance building journey. When you first go to gym, you're not going to raise 20 kilos. Mad if you try. You start with like two. So you read a little scripture at a time. Then you read one chapter and two chapters. You start lifting little weights first. 
you start lifting little weights first. And you may say, I'm not hearing from God, I'm not hearing from God. I'm sorry, you can go and look at someone, you know, they have these beautiful torn arms and torn backs and you want that when you start lifting in one week. It doesn't happen in one week. It doesn't happen in one week. Yes, muscles all melt away in, in weeks, but to build them up takes a long time. It takes a long time, tell, tell, not say everyone who has been lifting. It takes a while. But the first thing is that we apply discipline in our lives. This year, I want to encourage you, don't do it like every other year. Set your alarm for one hour earlier. Don't get caught up with the mad rush of everything else. Everybody, everybody is rushing. Everything in this day and age is made for speed and efficiency. Everything is a drive through Everything is instant gratification. Everything must be done now and yesterday. There is no time for the process. We need to trust the process. We need to trust the process. We need to, tr we need to take time to do what he, you know, I, I heard this story, and it, it was a sad story, but I, I, I read, I, have you heard of Robert Pierce? Bob Pierce? Have you heard of him? But you've heard of World Vision? Yes. And you've heard of Samaritan's Palace? Yes. He was the founder. He was the founder, Robert Pierce. He was a, a Baptist minister. He founded World Vision and uh, Samaritan's Palace. Um, he was a, a good man and a minister for God, right? Um, Ten months of the year, his family didn't see him because he was just so busy. One time his daughter called him and said, Dad, I really need you. And he said, I'm too busy. His daughter committed suicide, his wife divorced him. Um, sometimes we want to do things for God, but we forget that ministry is also our families, our children. You know, husbands, love your wives like Jesus loved the church. Lay down your life so that your prayers will not be hindered. See, you love your wife, so God will actually hear your prayer. She will submit to your parents. Honor your parents so that it may go well with you and you will have long life. You see, there is a reason we put God first. There is a reason that everything else falls into order when you put Him where He belongs. He is first. Honor Him with all of our hearts and all of our minds. Yes, the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak, but the flesh doesn't become strong on its own. The flesh gets strong because we feed the flesh. I want, I want, I want, I feel, I want, I desire, I like, I love, I want, I want, I want. So I feed, I feed, I feed. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Can't fast, have to eat. Oh my gosh, going for that buffet today, cut fast. If we starve the flesh, the spirit will grow. Whichever we feed, it will grow. And then we can't blame Satan for it because we have the willpower. God has given us the power to choose and to do and to exercise. His spirit enables us, the same spirit that lifted Jesus from the grave is in us, but we can choose what to do with it, can we not? So if you want to press snooze and sleep for an extra hour, you have the will to do so and the choice to do so. If you want to wake up the next hour and sit, even though it's going to be hard, winter time, it's going to be hard. But if you will keep that time aside, God will honor it. God will honor it. You say, teach me how to pray. Pray so that you will learn how to pray. <clears throat> Read the word so that your prayer will be his word. Make time for prayer. Make time for prayer. These are things that are important. Prioritize. Put first things first. Eliminate that last little box. Eliminate that. Or minor, bring it to a minute point. You know, if we are spending this many hours scrolling and scrolling and giving feedback and doing all of that things, how much time have I spent in the world today? Am I just giving him my refuse? Am I just giving him my leftovers? No, I will seek him early in the morning. I will seek him first thing in the morning because I know if I put him first, I will have the counsel of the Spirit. I will have the wisdom of God. He has given, you know, we don't do things to connect with God. We do things from the connection we have with God. Sometimes we get this wrong. 
You know, if we have read our Bible three times and if we have only not read it twice, we're like, ah, that's okay. You know, this week I read it three times this week. No, we do it from the connection. Just like that man who paid 2.2 million for that bull, he knew the value of that bull, right? If we know the value of who he is and what he has invested in us, he has put all of what he has put in us so that we can be something for his kingdom, right? We have a limited time, and at the end of time, we want to know, good and faithful servant, you have fulfilled every day that I have written out in your destiny. You have done what you have been called to do. Not that you have wasted time and space and energy and money. You know, if you want to know what your priorities are, the best way to do it is to have a look and see where do you spend most of your time and where do you spend most of your money. That will tell you. That will tell you. You know, when you want to do something, you will put all of your energy to doing something. Is that right? And when you don't want to do something, you will find every excuse not to do it. Is that right? The biggest myth is, I have no time. Everybody has time. We all have the same number of hours. What we do with it can stretch our time or can reduce our time. Is that right? Pastor Sam used his example, and this fantastic example. He said, she said, <laughs> she said, <laughs> She said about how you don't have time. You just don't have time and you have all these things you have lined up to do. And then suddenly you go to work and you get a call saying something's busted, your pipe is leaking, and you have massive plumbing issues, right? And suddenly your time has just stretched. You have time to call the plumber, time to get it fixed, time to come home, time to do everything. All of that just now became a part of your day that you didn't allocate for when you left this morning for work. Is that right? You have time. You make time for what is important. You discipline yourself for what is needed. You will build the muscle that you are working on. If the only muscle you are working on is this one, you will build that muscle. If you build other muscles, it will begin to show. It's just like your spiritual muscles. We don't determine how long we've been a Christian or how much, um, uh, um, how disciplined or how prioritized Jesus is in our life by looking at how many highlighting colors you have in your Bible, how many passages you have highlighted. That, that's, not, that's not a good gauge. How you gauge it is how much more like Jesus are you today than you were yesterday or the day before or the last year. We can be worshiping, we can be singing, we can be preaching, we can be doing all these things. But if our lives have not changed since last year and if we are having the same temper tantrums, if we are having the same hissy fits, if we are speaking the same language, if we are doing the same things we used to do, then we have not grown. We have not grown because we have not eaten. See, when a baby is first born, the first minute they go, yeah, you know he's either going to make a diaper or he needs to be fed, right? Sometimes we go through life like that. <laughs> Pass the break. <laughs> What's going to be I'm going to lose my job? <laughs> We're just so used to having a hissy fit every time something happens. How about get down on our knees and say, Lord, my God, I need you. You are the same God. I may not have a Goliath, but I have got my own giants. I have got my own giants, and you know what they're like. You are the same God. You have not failed me then. You will not fail me now. And I will stand on your steadfast truth. I will stand on your word. I will not call everybody in my phone directory before I get to you and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. Prioritize. So that we don't have to wait for the doctor's report. That we don't have to wait for that terrible situation before we can come in prayer. Prioritize because when you put him first, he will give you the grace to go through everything you need to go through. Don't let this year be like every other year. Don't let today be like every other day. Oh, I haven't had time for my Bible tonight, but tonight, uh, today I didn't have time, but tonight I'll try and make it home. But by the time I get home, I'm so knackered. Jesus understands. We are missing out. We are missing out. You know. The more I look about what's happening, and the more I see, what I understand is, you know when God said, if my people who are called by my name will call out to me, will repent and pray, I will hear from heaven, I will heal their land. The reason that we are not seeing these changes is because his people are not coming together to do that. 
that his people are not calling out on behalf of what they're seeing. We are his people. You know, in those days when revival was, when you read these revival stories, people came to church, they stayed in church. They prayed, they stayed, and they prayed, and they didn't even know time went by. We can't wait for the word to be over because we have so many things lined up to do after the word. We have so many things to do. We have so many places to go, so many people to see. We have so much. It's because our priorities are not aligned right. If we can start this year by saying, God, I want to put you first, but I want, I want to have discipline in my life. God doesn't discipline us. God, God doesn't teach us discipline when he has given us a willpower that we can discipline. He, he chases us, that is different. But what I'm saying is, he, 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 you, you put your alarm on and go to work, don't you? Does somebody else put their alarm up and wake you up every morning? No. Then you put your alarm up and you wake up. Oh yes, there are some people. <laughs> I'm glad I don't take care of <laughs> Put your alarm. Wake up. And you may not have a lot to say in the morning, but you get down on your knees and you worship. You worship. You take your Bible out and you start reading. Start with a book. Start with John. Start with Mark, Matthew, James. Start anywhere. Read a proverb. Read a psalm. Start somewhere. Read the whole Bible. Just read. His word is what renews our minds. His word is what transforms us. His word is the spiritual truth that gives us light and wisdom. If we don't read his word, what are we going by and what is transforming us? The word that the people tell us, words that our friends tell us, words that, words that our bosses tell us, what is transforming us? What are we going by? That bowl was sold for $3 because that man knew no value for that bowl. But the man who paid 2.2 million knew its value. You know the only person who knows your value is the one who purchased you. And he has given us his word. There is nothing more valuable than his word. And yet we spend the least amount of time reading his word. I want to encourage you this year, put time aside. Put your alarm clock on. Get up and read. Get up and read. If you have want a buddy to read with and to discuss, come to your connect groups and say, this year I want to read my Bible. This year I want to read my whole Bible. I just don't want to get stuck with three Psalms. I want to you know, expand from my three Psalms, 27, 23, and 91. 30 years I've been reading that. This year I want to do it differently. It's true. It's true. Some people for a lifetime will read only three Psalms. He has given us so much and we're still reading this one little thing. Have everything that he has for you. I know the plans I have for you, God says. You know, a long time ago I, I, I read this story and I shared this story with you, but I want to tell you, he has given us so much, right? He has given us so much. He has put so much within us. But unless we know what his plan is for our life, and unless we are in his perfect will, we will not accomplish everything he has for us. And we are wasting our years and our time. You know, we don't really understand how life and age creeps up upon us. We don't. Because your spirit doesn't age, so you don't feel age. But then you put all kinds of things out. Yesterday somebody asked me, why are you going to the osteo? I said, oh, I don't know, I have so many broken bits sometimes. And my osteo's thing is, oh, you're just getting old. <laughs> you know, we don't realize it, but age happens. We don't feel like we age, but age happens. You know, I read this and I used this a very long time ago, and I, don't, I, I won't forget the story. And I'm not a fan of Michael Jackson, but I'm sorry for those who you are. Um, you know, when, when he, he did this so Billie Jean, you know how the, 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 the video is, he, there are squares and he steps on the squares and the squares light up, right? So he, they were recording that and they were recording that and recording that so many times and he wasn't getting it right. Not that he wasn't a good dancer. He wasn't stepping on the, 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 the squares that were um, connected, right? 
he wasn't stepping on the connected, uh, connected squares, and so those squares weren't li lighting up. And his director was getting really frustrated with him, and he said, Michael, I know you're a great dancer. I know you can dance, and you can just dance. But unless you dance on those squares that I have wired up underneath for you, those are not going to light up. OK? Same story. You might be able to sing beautifully. You might be an eloquent speaker. You might have a gift to just connect with people like nobody else connects. People can tell the story and stories and stories, but when you stand, people hear your story. God has put these things inside of you for a very specific reason, for a very specific time, for a very specific end result. And we think it's to entertain our friends, and we think it's to tell stories, and we think it's to be the life of the party. It is for soul winning and to bring people to Him. It is for one thing and one thing alone that none may perish, for He has laid down His life, and He has put these qualities inside of you, so that you will move, and where He has already wired, and it will light up, and they will see the light, and they will know that it is of Him. Right. If we don't prioritize, if we don't put God first, if we don't put first things first, we can do ministry, we can do so many good things, and we can lose out on our calling. Husbands, love your wives. Children, honor your parents. Parents, don't aggravate your children. Do what he tells you to do, but seek him first. Put him first. Put him first, and he will align your footsteps. Seek ye the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added. And if you read that scripture a little bit more, you will read and see what are the things that are going to be added. He says, you know, don't worry about what you will eat, don't worry about what you will drink, but don't worry about what you will wear. Don't worry about any of these things. Because if you seek me, I will give you everything you need. Solomon in all his glory was not clothed as beautifully as the lilies in the, in the, in the fields were, because he is the one who clothes it all. He is the one who sees everything. You know, there's many things in my heart that I carry sometimes, but I do, I'm not anxious because I know he has not failed me and he will not fail me. So I go to him knowing full well that he knows in the right time, he, I know in the right time that he will fulfill his word because he is a faithful God. He heard prayers back then, he hears prayers now. He healed back then, he heals now. He is the same God. But if we put him first, he will do all things in our lives in the perfect time, in the perfect order, in the perfect way that only he can. He is a God of order. If we have lived a life of chaos, if we have lived Gone with the flow, my job needs me, my boss needs me, no everyone functions just fine without you. You put him first and everything else will fall into place. You know, when I was young, I came to my father and I said, I can't live without this man, I want to get married. My father said, This is not the man for you. Years afterwards I said, Dad, he's not the man for you. <laughs> You know, sometimes we come to our parents and say, please, mom, I can't live without him. Two years later, we say, please, mom, I can't live with him. Honor God and honor your parents. Honor God. Do what he tells you to do at night when you lay down and say, Lord, this day, I want to give this as an offering to you. And most days, you may not be able to give that as an offering, but if you live, you know, on camp, we did something amazing, and, I, I, and I'd like to ask you, invite you to bring that into your life, you know, incarnate listening with it. Do you remember this? People talk, but we don't really take the moment to listen or get into that person's feet, shoes, feet choose to listen to that person actively. Prayer is like that. To be intentional with prayer is important. To be intentional with living is important. You know, I was, my girls used to be so uh, amazed at how I can just go with the flow and, you know, didn't you plan for this? No, it's just happened. Now, in the morning, I only had two things on my list, uh, and by afternoon, I have 15 things on my list, and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm running around like a hippie too. When we don't, you know, there's an old saying, if you don't, if you plan, if you fail to plan, you will, Plan. Did I get that right? Yeah. If you don't, my mom used to say this to me all the time, and, and my basketball teacher told me, and it's not good at basketball, but they said, if you aim anywhere in the black square, you'll get in the basket. Is that right? Your basketball? Is <laughs> if you don't aim anywhere, it won't go anywhere. You've got to aim, basically. Stay, sorry. 
So if you don't set time, and if you just go, what are we doing tomorrow? Ah, I don't know, just go in with the flow. Set time aside. Diarize what you're going to do. I'm going to wake up, I'm going to read. Have a journal and write down what he gives you. Have a prayer journal, have a dream journal, have a journal for everything, have a song journal, he give you songs. What you want, he will give, he gives you the desires of your heart. If you want your desires for him, he will give you the desires of your heart. Don't get so busy with doing things that you miss him in all of it. You know, in every interaction, there is him. In the grocery store, when that lady is serving you and looks like she has had a hard time, there is him. In the person who has a massive trolley that's going all over the place and you're trying to get past, there is him. In the person that is driving 40 in the 60 zone, there is him. In all things, there is him. Begin to see it. Begin to pray. But all that will come as you prioritize him. If you put him first, you will begin to see. Today we say, break my heart for what breaks yours. Those are big prayers. <coughs> Those are big prayers. I, I go for a walk with a couple of friends from work and we had read some really hard stuff that day and we were discussing it and she was, one of them was really, really upset about it and she was, that's really hard, that's really hard. And the whole, the next day on the train she was crying just remembering something we had shared and she was like, I, I don't know if I can, you know, grapple with this and I can, I can reconcile with what I've just heard. You know, what I realized is not everyone's heart breaks what breaks his. If he has given you a heart that has moved, it's because he wants you to do something about it. He hasn't get past the same daughter's intercession, intercession and prayer last time. How do you see? If something really bothers you, it is time to take it for him because he has given you a heart like his. If, some, if you can't go to bed because you're thinking of something you saw, it's time to get on your knees and pray about it. It's not to say, thank God, it's not my child. No, it is someone's child, someone's child that has been hurt by someone. And Jesus says if someone, the, the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. And if it hurts them, it should hurt us. There is so much, there is so much. Prioritize him, put him first. Set time in your diaries, set time in your alarm clocks. This is my Bible reading time and this is what it's going to be. Connect with your connect group. Tell them I want to read my Bible this year and I'm going to read it. Will you help me? If I don't feel it, I'm, I'm going past that daily reading little scripture that comes up on your Bible app. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not the Bible reading I'm talking about. Share. Everybody knows I read the scripture today. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about really turning the pages and really reading a chapter or two or more. Just read. Just read. And he will begin to give you his attitude. He will begin to speak. And you know what? Before you even know it, you will look back and say, I don't recognize who I was yesterday or the year before. We are all a work in progress. We are in here because he is good and he is faithful. And he has given us his Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit doesn't flutter away just because you do something. He is in you to stay and he gives you the power to do what you need to do to be more like him. But how can we be more like him if we don't know his word over our lives and the value of his life, love over our lives? Read his word, prioritize prayer, prioritize Bible reading, prioritize int um, intimacy, but um, what was the word I used before? Incarnate. To think about, to be intentional, to be intentional, not just prayers about what you want, but prayers that are intentional. Pray big prayers this year. Pray big prayers. Invite Him. Invite Him. Will you prioritize Him this year? Would you put Him first? Let Him not be just something that comes along. Oh, I have time. I, 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 I have done the dishes early today. I can read a psalm. No. Seek Him first. Jesus went first thing in the morning. Jesus retreated from his friends and spent time alone. It's great to have family. It's great to have friends. It's great to have good times. But lock yourself up sometime. Make time just where it's you and him. And so you can receive just from him. Just from him. And it's important. This is how we grow. If every time something crisis happens, we're calling pastor, we're asking other people to pray, 
Where is our prayer life growing? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, we need to, sometimes we need to agree in prayer, and it's very important that people come together and pray. That is very good. But what I'm saying is, what about your own prayer time? What about your own prayer time? These are not things that your pastor can pray for you. Pastor, please pray that I can read my Bible. No, you can't even read your Bible. You can't even read your Bible. Pastor, please pray. I want to, I want to pray. So get up and pray. Nobody stop. Get up and pray. Let's prioritize. Let's put him first. Let's give him the reverence he is due. Let's exalt him with our lives, not just with our lips. He never wanted lip service. He said it then, and he's telling you now, he doesn't care about lip service. He cares about heart service. Where is our heart? Will you worship, with, with, will you worship him with all of your heart? And worshiping him looks a little bit different with your heart than what it does with your mouth. Because it's easy to move your lips and say what you want to say, but it's not easy to gear up everything else and move in the direction he wants you to move. But you will move when you come into his will. And just like Michael Jackson squares, you know, you will start to step into the will that he has for you. And you will fulfill the destiny that he has for you. That our lives may not be wasted. That we will not live, you know, in Sri Lanka, when people say, how are you? They say, oh, hey, no. <laughs> we will not, oh, hey, no. We will live intentionally. That's an unintentional <coughs> word. It's like, I'm just, we will live intentionally. This year, 2024, will be different. That we will not, oh, hey, live. That we will live intentionally. That we will seek after him intentionally. That we will want to hear from him intentionally. And remember, when you first go to the gym, you're not going to see those beautiful muscles and that torn back. You're going to work through it. So work through it. Work through it. Work through it. Do it. He will give you that grace. Just keep reading. Keep reading and keep praying. You will start seeing the muscles. When you start walking, when you start flexing, you say, oh, muscle, muscle. You start seeing it. You start seeing the spiritual ones too. You start seeing it. When you start flexing, you start seeing it. You start seeing it. So make time for him. Prioritize. And don't let this year go. Look, January, second week of January, we married, aren't we? How quickly does time go? How quickly does time go? It'll be Easter soon, and we'll be in the middle of the year soon. But don't let another year go without us taking stock and prioritizing. Will you bow your hearts? Let's pray. Father, you are so good. You are so good. Lord, we have worked and we have eaten and it has not filled us. We have drunk and it has not filled us. We have sought everything and it has not filled us, but it has just consumed us. Lord, we come to you and we want to put you first. So we put you first. Now we, we're going to stop wanting and we're going to put you first. We're going to make time for you and for your word and for prayer. We're going to discipline our lives. Lord, so that not, not that we may appear righteous, but Lord, because you have made us righteous and you have clothed us with your righteousness because of who you are, because of your love, and because of what you say we are to you, we want to draw close to you. We want to hear from your word. We want to pray. We are desperate for you now. We are not waiting to be desperate, but we are desperate for you now. Lord, we honor you with our heart with our mind, our spirit, our soul, and our flesh cries out to you. Because you are the same God, we will put you first and honor you with all our hearts, with all our resources, with all our time, with all our energy. We will honor you, Lord. We will honor you, for you are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let it be your prayer every day. And let it be your spiritual discipline every day. In Jesus' name. Amen.